Hello, friends, and welcome back to Stories About Entitled People. Who steals $62,000 and thinks it's okay? She stole our OP's checkbook, fake signature, and used it for payment of services. But before we begin, best way to support our channel is to leave comments, like, and subscribe with the turned on bell so you don't miss the new video every single day. Here we go. Put the debt on my daughter. My wife and I are in the fortunate position of being wealthy. We had to work our butts off to get where we are, and we never forget where we came from. Our kids grew up rich kids, but we never spoiled them, even when we could have. They went to nice schools, had nice things, but they also had summer jobs and after-school jobs to pay for their own extras. We also pushed philanthropy in our family so our kids recognize they're privileged and that our life isn't even remotely how regular people live. I'd say for the most part, our kids have grown up to be respectful and good people. Our oldest children are twin boys and their sister, who's 18 months younger than them. All three are in college now. Our youngest two are in eighth grade. I got a call from our bank a couple days ago saying that someone had cashed a check that was charged to our bank account in the amount of $61,347.93 and that the check had been made out to the tuition office of the university my oldest three kids attend. Naturally, I investigated the matter myself with the university and got some answers. I pieced together that one of my kids snagged my checkbook and wrote a tuition check for a friend of theirs. There's a much bigger story behind why this kid couldn't pay, but that's private, and my wife and I agreed to fund this young person's education because of their private struggles. I grilled my kids and figured out that it was our daughter, Joanna, Joanna was apologetic, but she was also quite insistent that she stood behind her actions. I respect my daughter for her convictions, and she really did have good reasons for why she did it. But the fact remains that she stole and then she hid it. Joanna asked what her punishment is, and I told her to get a job because she now owes her mother and I $62,000. Here's the thing. I don't expect Joanna to pay us back, and if she came to me tomorrow with the money, I wouldn't take it. What I want is to see an effort made, an acknowledgement of her actions and the consequences. If I see that she's actively trying, I'll tell her that she doesn't have to pay me back. She's my kid and I love her, so all I want is for her to learn a lesson. But Joanna doesn't know all this, all she thinks is that she owes me $62,000. So naturally, I'm a horrible father and a very mean person. And our second story. Screw you, cabbie. This is my spot. This happened eight years ago. I've worked at my local airport doing fleet maintenance since I was 18. Ordinarily, my parking area exists in the VIP area of one of the terminals. In other words, I get a primo parking spot for free so long as I have my waiver displayed on my dashboard. It's been like that for the past three years I've worked there. Well, things changed. Apparently, the airport redesignated the VIP area as the cab waiting area yesterday, and my precious parking was now home to ex soccer mom vans driven by bored and angry cabbies. So, color me surprised when I pull into my VIP area tonight, and this cabbie's in my spot. My spot! And not two feet into turning into this area, I can see him shaking his head in violent disapproval as he walks toward my truck. Enter A-Hole Cab Driver, ACD for short. He walks up to my window as I turn my truck off, and before my door is even open all the way, I hear him bark, You can't park that here, you aren't a cab. Yeah, whatever, we'll see about that, I think, as I kindly remind him that I've been parking here for years and that this would be news to me. I tell him I'll go chat with airport security and see if it's really going to be an issue and if I need to move. He's clearly not moved by someone half his age not immediately leaving and repeats himself, You aren't a cab. You can't park here. I asked him when this change went into effect, and he responded something to the effect of, It's always been like this. You need to move your stupid truck. I know most everyone in security by now, and they pretty much brush it off, telling me not to worry as the parking is now shared. Parking tickets out there are outrageous, and airport police don't usually give warnings. So I go inside, grab a renewed VIP pass, and make my way out to my car. I knew ACD would just be waiting for me to be proven wrong and have to move my truck, and I wasn't going to give this a-hole the satisfaction of being right. 
I notice ACD staring me down the moment I exit the terminal, never losing sight of me while I approach my car. I open the door, turn my ignition on, his ears perk up as my engine turns over, and I take my time to correct my parking just to be slightly closer to the curb. I turn the truck off, happily display my VIP pass clearly on the dashboard, and begin walking back toward the airport to begin my shift. ACD is joined by two other cabbies at this point, each chain-smoking cancer sticks, and rasps out, You can't be serious. What company do you work for? That's not a cab. You need to move your damn truck before I call security. I walk a couple steps past him, and I'm fighting a conscious battle to ignore him or say it. I do it. I turn around slightly, look him dead in the eye, and mutter happily, Oh, don't worry. I work for Uber. Enjoy your obsolete job while you can, a-hole. And our next story. Jerk on a flight gets a downgrade. This one is thanks to my amazing girlfriend, GF, and the butt, butt, that sat next to me on our most recent flight. We were on a long international flight. GF was going to have a window seat and myself the middle. When we got to our seats, though, there was butt sitting in the window seat. I asked if he could check his ticket, and he moved to the aisle, albeit begrudgingly, in a dramatic effort to move his bag from under the seat. When the flight attendants came past, she asked him to move his bag to the overhead because it didn't fit under the seat properly. I took the benefit of the doubt when his bag hit me in the head, twice, but tried to shove his bag in the space that was left in the overhead and a bunch of stuff fell out of one of the pockets. Some things landed on me and his seat, mostly paper and wrappers. As I moved them off me and added them to the pile, he snapped at me not to touch his stuff. So, needless to say, it wasn't the best start to a flight, especially knowing we were stuck together for the next 10 hours. Nothing to deserve petty revenge yet, but I wanted to give you an idea of what butt was like. Well, we were a few hours in and GF is fast asleep. I'm watching movies and the dinner service is about to start. My GF is unlucky to be lactose intolerant. Not bad, but she'll need the toilet a lot the few hours after eating milk products. Lucky for her on flights, this means she gets her food before everybody else. My GF and me have an agreement not to wake the other up for food on these flights, as sleep is greater than food. This flight attendant delivers the food and I accept it for her, then ask Butt if he minds letting me out to use the toilet. He's clearly annoyed by this. I normally find this is perfect timing because once the full trolley service starts, getting to the toilet or back to your seat is a pain. And the line for the toilets is always short, just before food service. I leave GF's food on my tray for if she wakes up and go to the toilet. I'm gone for a couple of minutes, and when I get back, I can't believe what I see. But is filling his mouth with GF's food. Me. What the hell, mate? That's my girlfriend's food. But, well, she wasn't eating it. Besides, allergies are all in the head. Me. You're a effing jerk. GF wakes up and people start looking. Can't blame them, it's in-flight entertainment and I'd look too. GF, what's going on? Me, this D is eating your food. There was a bunch of name calling from both sides, a few people around us chime in too. A flight attendant rushed over and was able to calm everybody down. She makes butt get up so I can sit back down. My GF with a cool head asks the attendant to check if there are any options she can have and that may contain or processed in a facility with milk is fine. But looks like he's enjoyed my GF's meal and the flight attendant offers GF the chicken, which comes with a dessert that may contain milk. The moment my food hit the tray, GF sneakily grabbed the cheese packet and ate it with the biggest smile on her face. 20 minutes later, she was asking if me and Butt could get up. She comes back 10 minutes later and asks us to get up again. She comes back and the process repeats again. But eventually snapped and said he wouldn't get up again. GF asks if they could swap seats, but seems to have forgotten our first interaction was he didn't want to give up his stolen window seat. He refuses to swap seats and tells her to F off. But is living up to his name and continues to refuse to move. People are telling him to get up and the flight attendant comes over, just so happens to be the same one from earlier. We explain the situation and GF bluffs that it must have been the dessert forgetting to mention the cheese she stole from me. The flight attendant offers to move butt and he accepts with a crap-eating grin on his face. 
GF goes to the toilet, and I enjoy some extra leg room. When GF gets back, she looks a bit too happy. She went on to explain that when she came out of the toilet, she saw Butt again. He had an aisle seat right next to the toilet. I hope he thought eating my GF's dinner was worth the annoying toilet light, flushing, smell, and people constantly standing in line next to you. And our last story. Entitled woman thinks she controls the electricity. I am a permanently physically disabled guy who in 2007 was renting a room in a large house owned by a lovely older woman from Taiwan. Unfortunately, given the nature of the house, a lot of people there came and went and sometimes we get a real creep. Single father in his 50s was perving on the owner's 17-year-old daughter. Then we got a woman from Fiji who seemed really nice. Until Christmas Day. See, the owner had the garage renovated into a nice big bedroom where this 50-ish Fijian lady moved in. However, on Christmas Day, she holed up in her room with her adult son. She decided to off the breaker switches. Recall that her bedroom used to be the garage? On Christmas, when it was 17 degrees Fahrenheit outside, so we really needed the power for space heaters. House was old, so no central heat or air. When we knocked on the door, her son would answer without opening up and tell us that his mother was sleeping and we had to go away. This continued for two hours before I got sick of it and had to call the landlord up from the next state where she was celebrating with her then fiance. She drove 90 minutes just to show up and serve an emergency eviction. This brought the woman and her son out, allowing the fiance to get the electricity back on to the rest of the house. That night, this nutty broad spent the entire night screaming while she utterly destroyed the kitchen. She even managed to rip the oven door off its hinges. Thankfully, the landlord returned in the morning with city police and escorted her out with her stuff. She had a new range unit brought in that afternoon. Hey guys, thank you all for watching the video. I'll see you in the next one.